Hi guys. So I was trying to work out a way of livening up my videos and I'm hopeless with like animation, illustrations, etc. Any of you are good at that, get in contact with me because I would love to work with you. But now I'm on holiday in Colombia, I thought it'd be fun to film some videos here and have a more exciting backdrop and hopefully be able to relate what I'm teaching to you to the surroundings a bit more, which will make it a little bit more interesting. So today's video is going to be on leaf structure. So I'm going to be talking you through all the layers of the leaf and then I'm going to be linking that to transpiration and I'll be talking to you about the factors which affect transpiration. So let's start by thinking about the leaf. Now, obviously when you're drawing a plant cell, your, um, the reason why you're labeling the plant cell is really so that you can start talking about photosynthesis because, because remember, photosynthesis is the number one plant process whereby plants capture sunlight energy, they do special reactions together with carbon dioxide and they produce their food, their glucose, which they can then use to grow leaves, grow roots, grow flowers, reproduce, etc. Now, the leaf of a plant is adapted to enable it to photosynthesize as efficiently and effectively as possible. So with the leaf, remember we're looking at it from the side view, so we're going to start at the topmost layer and work our way down. So first of all, we have the waxy cuticle. Now, if they ask you what the role of the waxy cuticle is, it's to prevent transpiration. I'm going to talk about what transpiration is in a moment. Underneath of that, you have the upper epidermis. Now the upper epidermis is transparent in order to allow light through. Now remember with all my videos, the wording I give you is pretty much exam perfect. I don't use extra words, you want to literally be writing what I'm saying in order to score, score full marks. Underneath that you have the palisade layer or the palisade mesophyll. Now this is what you, when you're drawing your plant cells, this is actually the palisade mesophyll layer. So you're going to be drawing me lots of chloroplasts, a vacuole, a nucleus, cell wall and cell membrane. And if they ask you what the role of the palisade mesophyll is, it's to contain lots of chloroplasts to carry out lots of photosynthesis. Underneath that you have the spongy layer. Remember that has lots of air spaces to allow gases to diffuse. Things like carbon dioxide and oxygen need to move through the leaf. You have the vein, which contains the xylem and the phloem. So remember the xylem brings water and mineral ions into the leaf. The phloem takes away the sugar that the plant leaf has made. Underneath that you have the lower epidermis, don't worry too much about that, they won't expect you to write anything about that. And then lastly and most importantly you have the guard cells and their role is to control the opening and closing of the stomata. Because remember the stomata is a hole and it's through that hole that carbon dioxide is allowed into the leaf, oxygen leaves the leaf as well as water. So now we can talk about transpiration. What is transpiration? Well it's the loss of water vapour from the stomata of a leaf. So let's try and look at the overview. Remember that plants are constantly losing water through their leaves, through the stomata, and if that happens too much and they're unable to replace it at the roots, what you'll see is the plant will begin to wilt. So it's in a very sad, sorry state. So it will choose to close its stomata to try and reduce water loss. What's the problem with it choosing to close its stomata? Well, obviously it can't take carbon dioxide in, therefore it can't be photosynthesizing. So it's a kind of win-lose situation. Now we can talk about the factors which affect transpiration. So as I've already said, transpiration is about the loss of water vapour from the stomata of a leaf. Now, when you're answering this question, if they ask you for which factors increase transpiration rates, you want to answer it as if you're answering the question, which is, how would you encourage your washing to dry? Now, if you were going to hang out washing, what conditions would you pick to ensure that your washing dries as quickly as possible? First of all, you'd hope that it was dry. You'd hope that it was hot you'd hope that it was windy and obviously you wouldn't care about this, how sunny it was with washing because that's, that's a different thing but in terms of transpiration of plants you'd also hope that it was sunny and I'm going to talk you through that now. First of all, windiness increases transpiration rates because what it does is it blows water vapour from the surface of the leaf and that means that it's nice and dry surrounding the leaf. Now if there's more water inside the leaf compared with outside you'll find that water will leave by diffusion far more quickly because there's a steeper concentration gradient. And that's why if it's dry, transpiration occurs much faster. When it's wet and humid like it is here because we're in the jungle, what you find is transpiration rates are much slower. And that's because there's an awful lot of moisture in the air. 
So you find that there isn't a steep concentration gradient between the inside of the leaf and the outside of the leaf, which means that water vapour can't leave as easily. And that also explains why, you're in a tr why if you're in a tropical country and you want to dry off your clothes, you really can't get them to dry. Like Matt and I have had wet clothes now for about a month because we just can't get any of our clothes to dry. It's really annoying actually. So yeah, on this farm we're staying at, um, they really, you can see that they're going to really struggle to dry their clothes and I'm actually getting soaked waiting here. Let's also discuss other things. So I've talked about the wind. High temperatures will also increase transpiration rates and that is because the water molecules are moving faster. They have greater kinetic energy. So they're moving away from that leaf faster, increasing the concentration gradient. In terms of sunniness, sunniness, lots of sun increases transpiration. And the reason that is, is because the stomata will open because lots of photosynthesis will be taking place due to the high amounts of sunlight. And the plant will be wanting to allow lots of carbon dioxide into the leaf in order to photosynthesize. So because those stomata are open, it does mean that water vapor will also leave at the same time. So yeah, you're looking for high sun levels, you're looking for high temperatures, lots of wind, and dry conditions in order to maximize transpiration rates. And like I said, if in the exam you totally can't remember what you're talking about, just try and remember washing drying and thinking about what you would do to encourage your washing to dry. So I'm gonna start by answering some exam questions. So 2A, carbon dioxide enters a plant through stomata on the leaves. Name the cells that control the size of the stomata. Well, I just mentioned that in the video and remember those are the guard cells. 2B. Scientists grew tomato plants in air, air containing different concentrations of carbon dioxide. The results... The, oh my goodness, I can't talk. The scientists recorded the number of stomata found on the lower surface of the leaves of plants grown at each carbon dioxide concentration. Um, so we can see at zero concentration of carbon dioxide, we can see there's a large number of stomata, over 16. And then when you get up to 13 units of carbon dioxide, so a very high level of concentration, you see far fewer stomata, so approximately one. So I'm just doing that to make sure I know what the graph's on about before I get to the question. Describe the relationship between the mean number of stomata per millimetre squared and the carbon dioxide concentration. And luckily, because I've had a good look at the graph, I already know what I need to say. So what you want to say here is that as the carbon dioxide levels increase, the mean number of stomata decrease. And for the second mark, you want to talk about the shape of the graph and say that there's a rapid drop initially. Suggest a reason for the relationship you described in B part 1. Well, if there's more carbon dioxide, because remember the whole point of the stomata is to allow carbon dioxide into the leaf for photosynthesis and to allow water out. So obviously, if there's more carbon dioxide, then you don't need as much as many stomata to let it in and if there's hardly any carbon dioxide then you need lots of ways of getting that carbon dioxide into the leaf so really all you need to say here is that when there's more carbon dioxide the plant doesn't need as many stomata so just one disadvantage to a plant of having a large number of stomata per millimeter squared on each leaf i just talked about the fact that as well as carbon dioxide entering water leaves now if you have a lot of stomata opening then a lot of water is going to be leaving and the issues with lots of water leaving the plant is the plant will potentially begin to wilt and it will lose too much water. Suggest so one environmental condition where a large number of stomata per millimetre squared on each leaf would be a disadvantage. And effectively you're looking at places where there isn't very much water. So you're looking at hot places, dry places. And remember the other things which affect transpiration is things like wind, so where there's lots of wind, but it's an environmental condition, so don't say desert, even though you'd be right in that a desert would be somewhere where you wouldn't want lots of stomata. They've asked for an environmental condition, so that basically means the weather. Nine, the diagram shows a cross-section through a leaf. Each part of the leaf is adapted for a specific function. Name each part of the leaf and explain how it helps the leaf in photosynthesis. So crucially, do both. Make sure you're naming and giving an explanation of how it helps. So layer A, it's not pointing at the waxy cuticle. It's definitely pointing at the upper epidermis. And you must state the word upper to get the mark. Now, remember in my video, I just mentioned that you don't have to say too much. You just want to say it's transparent to allow light through. Layer B. Let's look down. Okay, those are your regular plant cells, so remember the fancy name for that is the palisade layer or the palisade mesophyll, and you want to say it contains many chloroplasts which contain chlorophyll to carry out photosynthesis. So you want to be very, very technical here. Um, and the other thing you wanted to mention is the role of the chloroplasts, which is that they absorb light. Sorry, that's my cat shaking her bell. Layer C, again, it's worth three marks, so be very, very technical. 
That is the spongy mesophyll. You want to say that it contains lots of air spaces which allow the diffusion or the movement of gases. And we can also see a vein there, which is the dark grey area surrounded by the white blobs or the white tiles. Remember the vein is the xylem and the phloem, so you could talk a bit about that. Talk about the fact that xylem brings water into the leaf. So we've again been very technical. And then structure D. Okay, so that's looking at the cells surrounding the gap. So remember that gap would be the stomata, but it's not pointing at the gap. It's pointing at the surrounding cells, which are the guard cells. The guard cells control the opening and closing of the stomata. Why do they do that? Well, it's to allow carbon dioxide into the leaf. Now, looking at this mark scheme, you have got to be so descriptive. They are incredibly fussy. You need to mention all the scientific words. You're not allowed to be vague. So basically, everything I just said, you need to say in order to make sure you score full marks because there's five... Eight, um, ten marks available for that question so it's really important that you do well on it. Now we're going to take a look at a more practical question and um, these tend to be a bit more difficult. So four leaves were removed from the same plant, a waterproofing agent was spread onto some of the leaves as follows and that waterproofing agent tends to be something like Vaseline so they'll just spread it over either one side of the leaf, both sides of the leaf or not at all and that should affect how much water is being lost by transpiration. Just wanted to tell you that so you actually understand what's going on with this experiment. Anyway, with leaf A, we can see Vaseline's been spread on both sides, so both sides will be blocked. Leaf B, it's only on the lower surface, so remember if you look at the structure of a leaf, we're looking at the guard cell stomata layer. Leaf C, it's only on the upper surface, so effectively they've spread it all over that waxy cuticle, which is at the top of the leaf. Leaf D has been left nice, alone, nice and alone, so no Vaseline anywhere. Each leaf was then placed in a separate beaker and each beaker was weighed at intervals, and the results are shown in the graph. So we're looking at how much mass that beaker's lost, and remember, the reason why it will lose mass is because the leaf will be transpiring, so it will be losing water, and it will be losing water differently depending on which side has been blocked. Now, I hope this makes sense to you, but most water has obviously transpired through the bottom of the leaf, through the stomata, so obviously if that's been blocked, as it has been in both A and B, you're going to see um, the smallest decrease in mass because transpiration won't be occur occurring so much. And yeah, we can kind of see that from the graph. Um, leaf D, we can see, has lost the most amount of mass. Why? Because there was no Vaseline on either surface, so it's just behaving normally and transpiring a lot. So I hope I've given you some help with understanding what's going on with the experiment. So 2A, give evidence from the graph when answering the following questions. Which leaf, A, B, C, or D, loses water most rapidly? Evidence. So you're going to have to say why you picked that letter, not actually the science behind it, but just say why you've picked it, and that's worth one mark. And we can see, therefore, quite clearly that it's D, because it has the steepest decline in mass. So you're going to say leaf D, and because it's lost the greatest amount of mass in the same amount of time. Is water lost from both surfaces of the leaf? Draw a ring around your answer, yes or no, and give evidence. This is a bit more tricky, because they haven't given you much space to explain yourself. The answer here is yes, the reason being that if you need to look at B and C here and you can see that um, with B the Vaseline was on the lower surface only, however it still lost water, so we know that water was being lost at the top of the leaf and then in C, although the top of the leaf was um, blocked, the bottom of the leaf wasn't blocked and we see a decrease in mass so therefore, um, we know that it's being lost out of both the top and the bottom. I'm going to read you out the mark scheme because it's quite hard to actually work out what you need to write. So you're going to say yes, and you're going to say because both leaves B and C both lost mass. So actually, I probably said way too much then, as per usual. Diagram 2 shows the appearance of each surface of the leaf as seen through a microscope. Name the spaces labelled X, so it's the hole, and that's therefore the stomata. Use information in diagram 2 to explain why the results are different for leaves B and C. That's worth two marks. So you want to say, let's make sure we're talking about the right one. Leaf B was on the lower, the Vaseline was on the lower surface only. So you're going to say here, um, the results are different because in leaf B there was Vaseline on the bottom of the leaf. And that meant that the stomata were blocked which means less transpiration occurred, which means less mass was lost. Whereas on leaf C, only the upper surface was blocked, which meant that all the stomata were still present on the lower surface, which meant lots of transpiration could take place. Right, I hope you found this video a bit more varied. 
um, I wanted to give you some context. Um, please like it if you did like this video and don't forget to sub. I'll be back soon guys, bye!